and welcome to And So Much More. I'm your host, Cami Smith, and I am here with Dr. Bikram Ball, who is joining us to talk about something that's just, it's not really a casual thing you have a conversation about, colonoscopies, um, but really more colorectal cancer awareness. Um, and that's a lot to jump into. <laughs> so before we do that, why don't you tell us a little bit about yourself? Well, thank you, Cami, and thank you for having me. And I'm Absolutely. so glad that you guys are highlighting this topic. You know, March is Colon Cancer Awareness Month. And like you said, it's a casual conversation, but there's nothing casual about colon cancer. Yeah. So I'm Bikram Ball. I'm a gastroenterologist. I've been practicing gastroenterology for about 15 years. I've uh, been with Centra for about 12. Uh, primarily practice out of the Farmville campus. I'm also the chief medical officer for the Centra Medical Group. Mm -hmm. So you've got a long history with Centra, but also a long history with this topic. That's correct. That's correct. I've been doing this uh, since 2009. Oh, wow. So yeah. when this month comes around every year, um, what, what does it look like in your office? Like, are there any further steps you all take to kind of bring awareness to this for Absolutely. your patients or for their families? Absolutely. You know, one of the things about colon cancer is that in 2024, it is really the only cancer that's preventable. So I often tell my patients, you know, especially if you're a male, mm -hmm. there is no other cancer that you can prevent. You know, wow. being a woman, you can get other tests for like breast cancer, cervical cancer. Mm -hmm. But as a man, if you're trying to be healthy, you know, mm -hmm. colon cancer is the only cancer that you can prevent. So um, we usually use March really well to bring around a lot of awareness. Yeah. You know, the problem with colon cancer is that we're seeing about 150,000 cases of colon cancer diagnosed in the United States every year. Um, it is the third most common cancer in the world. It is the second most ca uh, common cancer that kills in the wow. United States. So, and all of this colon cancer for a large part can be prevented. Yeah. Uh, we can actually bring down the uh, incidence to probably about less than 50,000 a year if wow. everybody got screened for colon cancer. So you're right. So that's because of that we use this uh, opportunity to do a lot of awareness around yeah. colon cancer. We will usually, I'll do a couple of talks in the community. Mm -hmm. uh, we have this thing where we will uh, set up some booths around the hospital at the entrance. Okay. Uh, we'll have a meet and greet with patients to spread more and more awareness uh, about colon cancer. Yeah. And actually this year, this is exciting. This is the first year uh, we are doing this thing, which is going to be called strolling through the colon. Okay. And then my team and I, we're all going to get dressed up as different things. No. So I'm getting dressed this. up as a colonoscope. <laughs> I have some uh, folks who are dressing up as a polyp, as our <laughs> snare, you know, the, 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 the screen we use for it. Uh, so a lot of different things. And we're going to open a meet and greet to come to the hospital. So wow. if folks want to ask questions, uh, we will be happy to answer them. I love that. Yeah. I love that you are bridging that gap between this, like, potentially awkward conversation. Sure, sure. Um, and it, you know, I think a lot of times we try to destigmatize these things as healthcare workers. Right. And that is m probably the coolest idea I've heard of destigmatizing. <laughs> right, we thought, uh, we thought it, should be, it should be fun. Yeah, yeah. it'll be a good time. Um, I love that you guys are doing so much uh, because when you think about, um, yes, colon cancer, but cancer in general, um, if, it, if it hasn't breached your circle, if, it, if there's not someone in your life who has been touched by cancer, it, you, you don't tend to think about it. You sure. don't tend to be aware of what do I do to prevent this? And, and a lot of times things are done too late because, you know, you stumble upon it as opposed to preparing for it. Absolutely. Um, and so before we kind of go into preventative, because I love how you keep talking about like this is preventative. Right. How, like, what is colon cancer? Like, how would you, if someone came in and they just had zero um, understanding of this, how would you break that down for them? Yeah, you know, so uh, I talked a little bit about that, you know, it's the third most common cancer. Yeah. It's the second most common cancer that kills. Yeah. So it is very, very common uh, in the uh -huh. American population. In fact, the incidence of colon cancer is going up in younger and younger individuals. Wow. And we'll talk a little bit about that later when yeah. we talk about screening strategies. So, we're, uh, you know, the USPSTF, which is the United States Task Force, for prevention of diseases has brought down the age to 45 now from oh, wow. 50. So a lot of folks think, oh, I have folks think that, oh, I can wait till I'm 50, yeah. but no, you actually want to do it at 45. Mm -hmm. And you know, the thing about colon cancer is that colon cancer, all colon cancers start as a polyp. 
Okay. So this is precancerous tissue that over a period of time, maybe three, five, seven, ten years, mm -hmm. based on your genetics and the kind of polyp it is, will then grow into cancer. Okay. And and the problem with colon cancer is that you are not going to have any symptoms until the cancer is advanced. Wow. So you may not even have any symptoms when you already have cancer. Mm -hmm. I mean, just yesterday we had this patient come in and nothing out of the blue had the cancer. Um, wow. So, so this is this is one of the challenges with colon cancer. So, a lot of times when you when we talk about doing colon cancer screening, I'll have patients say, "Well, I feel fine. There's nothing wrong with me." Yeah. But you know, but that's the point. You want to get this before you're not fine and there's nothing wrong with you. Yes. So, in other words, you really may not see any symptoms. Polyps have zero symptoms. You don't feel oh. anything. Okay. Um, even early colon cancer has no symptoms. You only get symptoms of maybe abdominal pain mm -hmm. or blood in your stools mm -hmm. or just bloating, difficulty with bowel movements when it's advanced colon cancer. Yeah. And that's when it's sometimes not operable. It's already spread and, you know, can lead to death. Yeah. So this is this is not even just having a really good conversation with your primary care provider, although that is vitally important. Right. This is also taking advantage of these screenings when it's necessary to get the screenings. Absolutely. Listening to your body. And and you mentioned this, but this really blew my mind. Um, so American Cancer Society, colorectal, colorectal cancer is actually dropping in ages 55 and above. Correct. Because people are getting these screenings and they're getting things found and taken care of in time. But in ages 55 and below, it has been increasing by 1% every single year. I think since mid-2020, I mean, mid-2000s. Do you know like yeah, what year that it's started? about then. You know, there was, a, there was a landmark paper that was published, I think, in about 2014, okay. which really caught a lot of attention, wow. uh, not only in the medical field, but in popular media as well. So colon cancer screening was started in 1992. That's okay. when the, you know, the Medicare and all these other insurance companies and healthcare associations came up that... If you even if you're asymptomatic, go get your colon cancer screening done yes. at the age of 50. Okay. And so then when we looked at the data from 1992 till about 2008, 2009, they saw that the risk of colon cancer above the age of 50 and more 55 was going down. Like the graph was just going down. Yeah. And then they saw that the uh, risk of colon cancer, or sorry, the incidence of colon cancer in the ages 40 to 50 and then up to 55 mm -hmm. was going up. Wow. And suddenly there was this discovery and they realized that probably the age to start screening at 50 is not the correct age. Yeah. You know, we probably want to start screening at 45. Mm -hmm. um, the incidence of uh, colon cancer is higher in African-Americans, especially African-American males. Okay. So actually the age for 45 was dropped to, the age was dropped to 45 for African Americans by the American Cancer Society in 2012. Wow. And then eventually in 2018, the age was dropped to 45 for all comers, this, regardless of ethnicity yeah. and gender. And um, I actually quite honestly think, I think uh, it'll probably get dropped to 40 within the next decade. Yeah. That That is reassuring to hear. Yeah. Now hearing all of the data, it seems to just point to that. It would just be a wise decision. And we talked a little bit about this before we started. Um, but, you know, like I'm in this stage of my life where, you know, we all go through the stage where like all of our friends are getting married and then all right. of our friends are having kids and buying houses or, you know, getting that first great job. But now it's like we know people who have cancer and, and that had never impacted my life until recently. And so... Knowing these things and knowing what is preventable, what can we do to keep this from progressing is so um, empowering, really, sure. to be able to spread that message. Um, and so getting screenings, I want to talk a little bit about like the preventative options. Is there anything else beyond getting screenings, hopefully soon by the age of 40, um, that you can do to prevent this? Yeah, so the, the risk factors for colon cancer are fairly clear. Okay. There are modifiable risk factors and there are non-modifiable risk factors. Mm -hmm. So the non-modifiable risk factors are genetics. You can't change those. Yes. That's actually the largest, probably one of the larger risk factors. I shouldn't say the largest, probably one of the larger risk factors. And the um, 
The second non-modifiable risk, modifiable risk factor is age. Mm. The risk of colon cancer does keep increasing with age and then kind of plateaus off around the age of 80 or so, but it continues to increase as you get older. Okay. And then there are modifiable risk factors and uh, metabolic syndrome, which consists of obesity, high blood pressure, high cholesterol is actually a largest risk factor now within our population. We're in the obesity epidemic, and uh, we it has become clear that obesity leads to increased colon cancer. Okay. The second one is your diet. Uh, so diet consisting of a lot of red meat mm -hmm. is also high. Uh, is a high risk factor. It increases your risk of okay. uh, colon cancer. And the third one, a big one, is smoking. Okay. So, so you know, and a lot of times people don't think about that. People think about lung cancer with smoking. Yeah. But actually colon cancer exists right up there wow. with the smoking as a risk factor. So many things. And, yeah. you know, I think sometimes we turn a blind eye to the eat healthy, take care of your body, stop smoking. Um, oh, my gosh, it can save your life. It's so right. important yeah. to yeah. take note of these things. <laughs> um, so... Is there anything else that you would just find so pertinent to share with our audience today? Absolutely. So, um, so you know, like I said, prevention, prevention, prevention. You know, mm -hmm. that old adage, prevention is worth uh, more than the cure. Yeah. And I think that is one of the important things to understand. Okay. A lot of times I meet folks and they're like, oh, when I get colon cancer, I'll deal with it. Uh -huh. Or if I get colon cancer, I I'm not going to do anything. And unfortunately, colon cancer is not one of those where you cannot do anything when you get it. You, un you unfortunately can't ride into the sunset mm -hmm. because your colon gets blocked. You end up with emergency surgery and all of that stuff that comes oh. with it. Um, so prevention is the key for colon cancer. And to my point before, if you are looking for a healthy, long lifestyle, mm -hmm. um, a healthy, long life, you know, this is one cancer that you can completely prevent. Okay. Um, so that's why, um, you know, screening is really important. Um, and then when you look at screening, there are two kinds of tests that we put it into. There are colon cancer prevention tests, okay. and then there are colon cancer detection tests. And then frequently, our patients and even sometimes our um, uh, healthcare providers do not know the difference between the tests that are colon cancer prevention and okay. colon cancer detection. Oh. So the colon cancer prevention test is a test where you can remove the polyp and prevent colon cancer from happening. Mm -hmm. Colon cancer detection test is a test which detects colon cancer, but you already have colon cancer, you mm. have not been able to prevent colon cancer. Okay. And like I often tell my patients, I said, once you have colon cancer, the horse is out of the barn. Like it's, you know, you're gonna be on a whole different pathway. Yeah. So the only colon cancer prevention test is a colonoscopy. All the other tests that you made, uh, you know, Cologuard is becoming very common. Mm -hmm. um, you know, you, you see a lot of advertisements for that on TV, hear yeah. it on the radio. But that is a colon cancer detection test. It doesn't prevent colon cancer. Oh. It lacks the specificity and the sensitivity to prevent colon cancer. Okay, it, that it, is a very important It is a very important, very important distinction. <laughs> okay. And so, so that's a colon cancer uh, detection test, not a prevention test. Okay. So that's one thing that I really, the second thing is uh, with the advent of the Affordable Care Act, mm -hmm. um, colon cancer screening mm -hmm. is covered by all insurance companies. You do not have to pay your deductible. You don't have to wow. worry about it. 90, over 90% 90 of the insurances, you don't even need a referral. You can just go ahead and call a gastroenterologist, to schedule your colonoscopy. Okay. Um, so I, uh, you know, I, um, I, you could say I'm a little biased. I'm a gastroenterologist, but based on the data, mm -hmm. I always recommend a colonoscopy because that's your chance of preventing colon cancer yeah. rather than detecting colon cancer. And in 2024, colon colonoscopies are very safe. Okay. Um, you know, you talked about the stigma attached yes, to it. Yes, let's destigmatize yeah. colonoscopies, please. And <laughs> yes, absolutely. A lot of people talk about pre uh, the preparation. Preparation okay. is the key. Preparation has changed a lot. It is not your, you know, grandma's preparation where you had to drink this gallon jug, oh, which I've tasted heard awful. Stories. <laughs> yes, we don't have that. You still have to do some drinking, but it's small bottles, very easy. Mm -hmm. Pills are available as well, and you oh, can okay. do pills. So there's a lot of options for uh, the preparation. Um, it's done under complete anesthesia now. So you wow. may have heard in the past that there are po folks who said, oh, I had so much pain, I yeah. was awake. We don't do that anymore. Um, it's done under complete anesthesia. So you sleep through it, you don't feel anything, you don't remember anything. 
only takes about 15 to 20 minutes. So it's a very quick procedure. Okay. There is no excuse to not get your colonoscopies <laughs> when I'm here. <laughs> you don't remember so, so, yeah. it, guys. You don't remember it. Right. Exactly. So really, it's easy preparation. You sleep through the procedure. Um, I Well, let me... It's not easy preparation. The preparation is hard. There is some work attached yeah. to it, but it is not what it used to be. It's easier preparation. Yeah. Um, the uh, It's a quick procedure. You sleep through it. Uh, complications are very, very, very low. They're like one in 10,000. So wow. you you don't have to pay for it out of pocket. Your insurance covers it. You don't even need a referral in over 90% of the cases. Yeah. So it's really, really easy now to go ahead and get a colonoscopy. Okay. And now when I, and then the, there's one point that I also would like to make, which is important, is that, you know, sometimes, so the, your insurance will pay for only one screening test. Okay. So let's say, say you'd get a Cologuard. And if the Cologuard is positive, then you will have to pay for your own colonoscopy. Oh. So this is another distinction that a lot of patients don't realize, and sometimes their primary care physicians don't realize. They will go ahead and tell them to get a Cologuard. That's free, but then they get a $4,000 bill for the colonoscopy because the Cologuard was positive. Oh, my goodness. And Cologuard has false positives. We see that a lot. It has yeah. false negatives. We see that as well. Yeah. Um, so Cologuard has its role, I, uh, but it is it has to be used in the right manner for the right patient yeah. and so on. Yeah. Thank you for that. I feel like that has really cleared up some things because, you know, it's everywhere. It's it's right. in all of our ads. Um but man, what they don't tell you. Right. <laughs> so yeah. vital. Well, wonderful. Thank you so much for coming on, for Absolutely. coming from Farmville to yeah, our studio. Yeah, happy to do it. Happy yeah. to do whatever I can to spread awareness about colon cancer. Awesome. Yeah. And thank you all for joining us on and so much more.